Hello everybody, here's my mama and my papa, and they're going to be uh, reading y'all Sunday message today, but I hope y'all enjoy it, and we love y'all, and I hope y'all enjoy the video, but I'll let them take it from here. Okay, good evening, it's about 3.30 something to 4 here, <clears throat> we don't have no church tonight, uh, they're supposed to have a funeral there, but uh, I thank y'all for uh, watching us, and the Lord gave us a message to give you, so we're going to give it to you today, and we will be praying in our uh, prayer book here, where we put all the names. So, welcome to our Sunday message. Amen. God is good all yeah. the time, you know. You know, we need to get the Word in us. You know, we need to read and see what God wants us to do for ourselves, you know, to be a witness for Him, to go out and, and uh, draw the lost souls in, you know. We are to be watchmen, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Being a watchman for Jesus Christ, you know, to win lost souls to him because these are the last days, you know. It talks about in uh, the Old Testament in Ezekiel about being a watchman and to be ready. And it also talks about it in Re Revelations uh, to warn the people. And it's, this is what Ezekiel's doing. He's warning the people here. Uh, and in Revelation, it's warn warning the people about the end time, uh, you know. And here he's warning the people to be ready too to uh, put their sins under the blood, you know. But I'll read it to you, and um, then I'll read some in the commentary for you. It says, uh, there, um, Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, you know that's what the pastors are for. They are really watchmen. Uh, any preacher or minister, even us, you know, we're ministers, but uh, we're not pastors. Uh, but anyway, uh, God sends people to warn people. And uh, we're to take that very seriously, you know, because that could be blood on our hands. And I'll read on over here and show you where it says that. Uh, it says, If the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blew the horn, the trumpet, and warned the people, uh, then whosoever beareth the sound of the trumpet... And taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. See, that, that this is a very serious thing, you know. If we don't warn the people, it could be blood on our hands, not telling people that Jesus is coming back soon, you know. And God's going to hold us guilty of that, you know. Amen. So we, we better uh, do what the Lord uh, tells us to do when he calls us to do something. Now, it says, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. See, that's very serious. Pastors and, and uh, ministers... Uh, need to take this very serious. Like if somebody in their congregation or something quits coming to church or something, you need to go and check up on them, you know, and see how they're doing. See if there's something bothering them or something, you know. Uh, don't let the devil uh, play with them and get them out of church, you know. We need to warn the people, you know, and just talk to them. You don't have to go and ask them, well, why did you quit church or why ain't you come to church? You go to them in a loving way, you know, uh, like a, a, the shepherd. You know, Jesus is loving. He's the shepherd, you know, and he... Uh, would go uh, and uh, talk lovingly to it. He wouldn't talk real hateful to anybody, you know. You kind of, uh, people sometimes get out of church. Maybe something was said or someone said something, you know, not, not really meaning anything by it, and it kind of hurt their feelings a little bit. Well, you know, you need to check up on these uh, new Christians, these young Christians, you know, and uh, lead them and guide them, you know, because if you don't, we are the watchmen. It's going to be blood on our hands if we don't tell them the, the word, you know, and love them back into church. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be with even the uh, congregation. They're supposed to witness, too, for uh, Christ, you know. It's not, not just all up to the pastors and the ministers and stuff. It's up to the lay members, too, to uh, see if somebody's... Uh, uh, something's going on with them and we don't understand what's going on. We need to love them and, and talk to them and see if they need somebody to lean on, somebody to talk to, you know. So it says, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman into the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them 
Oops, I lost my place. And warned them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou doest not speak to warn and wicked the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So he were to warn him and talk to him. Woo him back into the church. It says, Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So if we warn him, then our soul is free, you know. And it says, Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, Thus she speaks, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Therefore thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. See, if, uh, even if you was a Christian one time and you go out and you do stuff and you don't turn back to the God, then, uh, you know, you're going to be lost. You need to turn back to the Lord, you know. You, you think you're uh, go out and do a little bit of good deeds and it's going to be all right. No, you have to serve uh, God wholeheartedly, you know, and love him and, and, go and do what he tells you to do. Fail not to assemble yourself in the house of God, especially in the last days. And we are living in Revelation's times. Um, it says, When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin, and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, like if you steal something, you take it back to them, you know. When you do something wrong, you admit what you're doing and you, uh, uh, you know, go back and tell them, give it to them and tell them you're sorry, you know. It says, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He went back and made everything right. So he shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and commit iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet you say, The way of the Lord is not equal. O oh, you house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his own ways. Yeah, it's only going to be on your shoulders, you know. If you go and do right, you know, God uh, will forgive you. But if uh, you go on in your own way, you know, God, God's not pleased with that. So he wants you to, uh, you know, ask forgiveness for your sins and go and make things right. It says uh, in, uh, we are the watchmen for God. You know, for the young Christians out here, you know, we need to talk to them and show them God's love. But anyway, in the commentary, it says, Here begins a new direction for Ezekiel's prophecy. Up to this point, Ezekiel had pronounced judgment up, upon Judah and the surrounding evil nations uh, for their sins. After Jerusalem fell, he turned from messages of doom and judgment to messages of comfort, hope, and future res restoration for God's people. Uh, God had provision, had previously appointed Ezekiel to be a watchman, warning the nation of coming judgment. You know, that's what we're doing today. We're warning the nation that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And all this evil and stuff's going on out there, they better turn from it because God is coming back. He's not going to stand and, and watch all this evil go on, you know. He, a judgment day is coming. Now, here God appointed him to be a watchman again, but this time to preach a message of hope. More warnings would come. 
but these would be part of the larger picture of hope. God will remember to bless those who are faithful to him. If you're faithful to God, he'll be there with you and he'll bless you. But if you're just playing house, he's not going to bless you. We must pay attention to both as aspects of Ezekiel's message, uh, warning and promise. Uh, those who persist in rebellion against God should take warning. Uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're telling uh, the world out there uh, they're um, turning against God. They better turn back to God, uh, you know, because the day is coming. Those who are faithful to God should find encouragement and hope. Hope means more than having an optimistic attitude that tomorrow will be better. For those who follow God, hope means having a co confident expectation of eternal life with him in the new heaven and the new earth. Yeah, if we do what's right and we follow God's uh, roadmap here, it's his Bible, we will be with, he uh, with him in heaven, you know. But uh, if you don't, then uh, you're going to go to hell with the devil. So, and, and if you read this word, you'll see what hell's like. It's not a very good place. Trouble, um, how do you say it? I mean, torment, you, you don't get no ease. It's always, uh, it's far, you're burning. And whatever you desire, uh, like if an addict desires uh, dope and stuff, well then that's what they're going to desire in hell. And they ain't going to get no peace from it either. You know, it's torment in hell. It says gnashing of teeth. You know, if people just read the Bible and see what hell's like, they, they would want to shun it, you know. But, you know, most people don't read the Bible. And, and if they do, they just don't believe it. But they'll believe it when God comes. It says, finally, the exiles were discouraged by their past sins. Uh, this is an important turning point in this book. Elsewhere in Ezekiel, the people had refused to face their sins. Uh, here they felt heavy guilt for rebellion against God for so many years. Uh, Therefore, God assured them of forgiveness if they repent. See, if you repent and ask God to forgive you, he will. He's a loving God. He's there with his arms stretched out, wanting you to go to heaven with him one day. It says, God wants everyone to turn to him and receive forgiveness, life, and restoration. He looks at what we are and will become, not what we have been. God gives you the opportunity to turn to him. If you will take it sincerely, follow God, and ask him to forgive you when you fail. And that's what we're doing. We ask God to forgive us. Uh, and he will. He's a forgiving God. It says, uh, past good deeds will not save a person who decides to turn to a life of sin. Some people think if they have done enough good deeds, they can hold on to this sin. They don't want to give up. Otherwise, or others believe the good they do will outweigh the bad. Uh, but to try to be good in some areas so you can deliberately... Be bad in others is an excuse, and it fails. If you want a real and lasting relationship with God, it requires wholehearted love and obedience to Him. While good deeds will not save us, our salvation must lead to good deeds. Yeah, we are to do good deeds, but it won't save us. It says this includes restitu restitution for past sins. Uh, God expects us to make restitution whenever necessary for the wrongs we have committed. To do so shows we are truly following his leading. Now, near the beginning of his ministry, Ezekiel had been unable to speak except to give special or specific messages from God. Uh, God gave him the messages and that was all he could talk about, you know. And then after Ezekiel's prophecies come true, and the false prophets were exposed, Ezekiel was again able to talk freely and offer God's message of restoration and hope. Uh, and I got a few more to read, and then I'll turn it over to Milton. It says, The people refused to act upon Ezekiel's message. Uh, when people scorn your witnesses for Jesus or belittle your advice from God's word, don't give up. You are not witnessing for their benefits alone but out of faithfulness to God, offering his good news to everyone who will receive it. You cannot make someone accept the message. That is the Holy Spirit's unique work. You can only be faithful in delivering it. If, you, if your heart, in your heart, how much do you really love God? These people gave the appearance of following God, but they love their memory, their money more. Many people today also give the outward appearance 
impression of being religious while remaining inwardly preoccupied with all their benefits of their wealth. Jesus warned that we cannot love God and money at the same time. It is easy to say, I surrender all when we don't have much. It's when we start accumulating wealth that it becomes difficult to avoid loving it. The people were coming to listen to Ezekiel to be entertained. They weren't interested in hearing a message from the Lord and then putting it into practice. Uh, many people treat church as a form of entertainment. Ain't that the truth? They enjoy the music, the people, and the activities, but they don't take the message to heart. They are not interested in the diff difficulty requirements of Jesus or in giving up their free time to serve him. Have you reduced your church involvement to the level of entertainment, or does your worship truly change the way you live? Listen to God's words and put them into practice. That's what we're what, what we're supposed to do. God loves us. He wants us to be witnesses. He wants us to be watchmen too. You know, out there, if you see a young one fall, go and witness to them and show them that you love them. You know. But God has specific rules for us to follow, and that's what we're supposed to do if you want to make it to heaven. If you want to listen to the devil, though, and go out and do your own thing, as Ellis Presley would say, I do my own thing, yeah, and you end up in hell, too, when you do your own thing, you know. But love the Lord and do what he asks you to do, and one day after a while we see him in heaven where there's no sin at, you know. I love the Lord. I thank him for everything that he's done for me and Milton down through the years. He's walked with us and been with us and, and uh, took care of us, you know, and I thank him for that. And if anybody would just taste of God and see how good he is and how he walks with you and takes care of you, I, I, they would turn to him right away, you know, because all, all that's out in the world is evil and trouble. But if when you've got the, uh, uh, God in your heart, he takes care of you when trouble comes. Here's Milton. Amen, Word. Praise the Lord. God's good. All the time. Amen. All the time. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit in Romans here, the 12th chapter. But reading, reading there just now about uh, over Peter, about Cornelius, how he went about doing good for the Jewish people and uh, trying to help them, build a synagogue for them and everything. And all he done come up before God as a memorial. Uh -huh. And God sent an angel to him. And, and told him to send for Peter, and that he would explain to him more more plainly what how he could serve the Lord. Yeah. And uh, and God was dealing with Peter too, that uh, that he was accepting the Gentiles in. It's too much to read. I'm going to just tell you all about it. It's the yeah. tenth chapter of uh, uh, Acts. Acts. Tenth chapter of Acts. Need to read it. It's a good story, and all the Cornelius family was saved. Yeah. Not only him, but his family. And, you know, and, and he was a good man. But I'm going to read here in Romans 12. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by, re by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You know, we, uh, we get lifted up that Satan will, will yeah. pat you on the back, brag on you, get you lifted up. And that's what happened, happened to him when he fell from heaven. Uh -huh. He got lifted up and he fell from heaven like lightning. And that will cause us to fall. You get lifted up, think you're something. Yeah. You're setting yourself up for a great downfall. But, That's right. But Amen. you think uh, soberly, according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Uh, I'm going to skip on up here a little bit to the, the ninth verse. It said, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one toward another with brotherly love in honoring, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. But when troubles come and we we handle it the right way, God, you know, God's with us all the time. That's right, amen. And when troubles come and we throw a fit, 
for God's not pleased with that. Nope. You know, you you handle it the right way, and, and he'll he'll just grow, grow closer to you and help you through the trouble. That's right. You handle them, if and they come, you just swallow and, and uh, say, Jesus, help me. God, yep. help me. And said, he not, will. Yeah. said, rejoicing in in hope, patience, in trouble, tribulations. When tri tribulations come, just be patient. Don't get fly off the handle. We we, we can't be doing it. <clears throat> you know, or give a, somebody a piece of your mind. We ain't got no mind to spare. <laughs> ain't that the truth? We're going to have to hold on what we are. <laughs> It gets you in trouble. You know, being quickly to get angry will get you in trouble. Yeah. Said so distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you. Yeah, that's hard to do, but you know, the people persecute you, you just do good, do something good for them. What the Bible says. Yeah. <laughs> bless them which persecute you and curse not. Rejoice with them that do. Rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be be not wise in your own conscience. You know, be not, you know we, we want to lift up or be lifted up or Satan to try to get you uh -huh. get lifted up. Thank you something when you ain't nothing. You know when you have the right spirit, you can help people. People, everybody's watching, and you can yeah. witness to them and tell them about Jesus and get them saved. But if you have a hot head and smart people off or answer too quickly, people ain't going to have no confidence in you. They're they going to see what you are. You're yeah. of the flesh. You're not of the spirit man. That's right. said, so recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honestly in the sight of all, in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. You know, there's some people you, know, you just have to get away from. Them. Yeah. So they they ain't nothing but in a rage and, and blowed up all the time. You don't need to be around. That's right. That spirit will get off on you. Yeah. You know, we have a spirit of love and peace, kindness, a spirit to help people. It said, dearly be loved, dearly be loved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That's right. And, and, and it's in the word of God, and it's, it's a fact. Yeah. God will take care of you, and he will, vengeance is his, and he will repay. That's right. And we, we try to uh, repay ourselves, get uh, get evil, and plan evil against somebody, it, it'll blow up in your face, and it, it'll just be worse than it's ever been. Yeah. You pray for them. Ask God to help him. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now that's some good advice. <laughs> I'm taking it in myself. That's some good advice. It's hard to do that though sometimes. But if we keep the old man dead and the spirit man alive, we can yeah. But now if the old man starts coming back alive and we don't uh, rebuke him and put him in his place and keep him dead, you know, when we when we repented of our sin, the old man died. Mm -hmm. And we when we and we are brand new, born again Christians. But the devil will try to re resurrect the old man yeah. all the time, trying to bring him back, uh, bring up things that happened years ago, and try to say you got to get even. And you don't even realize that Satan's talking to you. You think you're just thinking, it's the devil talking yeah. to you. You know, we want to go to heaven. We're living too close to to the rapture or to, to the end of time. You know, we we have our bound. And we, uh, I might leave here today or tomorrow. Yeah. Or we all might leave if the rapture takes place. You need to be ready at all times. Yeah. You know, one thing for sure, uh, the Bible says all all dies, and we all want to, you know, all of us are going to go back to the dust of the earth, but our soul is going to heaven. That's right. If we got our sins under your blood, and if not, our, our soul is going to hell. Yeah. We torment. God is so good to For us. For eternity. Yeah. 
God is so good to us. That's yeah. forever, right? That's forever. Hell's eternity forever. Eternity in hell and eternity in heaven. And, and, Which do you want? Yeah. And we, it's up to us to chose. Yeah. We, we All we got to do is just have a made up mind. I'm going to heaven. A made up mind. I am going to be a Christian. I'm going to serve God. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> and when the old devil tries to go to talking to you, he does. He'll yeah. talk to us. God will talk to us too. Yeah. He'll tell you things. You know, like I said the other day, I was going to Beckley and I was thinking about my ankle bothering me. I couldn't hardly go down to the chicken house. It's got, got a grade and my ankle would bother me real bad. And, I, and I, I've had it prayed for many, many times. And the Lord said, won't you pray for it? And I, and I, I listened. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, heal my ankle. And I don't know what, what all I said, but then, then when I, I noticed later, it don't hurt no more. I can go down to the chicken house and come back up that grave. Then the first day of deer season I went home, God healed my ankle. I was amazed. It, it, it thing had bothered me for over 40 years. I guess more like 50 years. When I first went in the coal mines, I heard it. And the, the doctor told me it always, it always bothered me. And uh, it has, but uh, it ain't now. <laughs> God healed it. Yep. He, 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 he answers prayer. He does. And yep. sometimes when we pray and he don't answer it right away, you know, we don't quit praying first. Don't quit praying about it. Pray till you get your answer. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it'll come. That's right. Amen. It will. God, God loves us. And he wants to bless us. He wants yep. to heal us. And God loves us. He loves us. Just read this romance. How you love your children when they do good, that's the way God feels about us. When we live right and temptations come and we make the right decisions and pass those temptations. Yeah. Praise God. Love you. Praise God. We're gonna pray for over the prayer book now. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You gonna pray or am I gonna pray? You go ahead and pray. Father, I ask you, Lord, God all these requests in this book, I ask you, Lord, to answer answer yes, them, Lord, Lord, heal them. You know, the Bible Amen, says Jesus. that if we ask and believe if what what we we're gonna have what we ask for, we have it. That's right. So, and you know, we ask them and we believe it. We don't yes, doubt. Lord. We know that God, you know, just like when He healed my ankle, He's healed me many times. When I was seven years old, He healed me. Uh, I was supposed to die, but you know, God said no. God is an awesome God, and He yes. loves us. He wants to bless us, and the, every time we do good and, and, and pass the test and don't fly off the handle, we quick to. To uh, speak, we need to be so slow to speak, quick to listen, and have the love of God in our voice. Lord, thank you for answering all these prayers in Jesus' yes, name. Lord. Amen. In your mighty name, Jesus, Amen. we thank you, Lord. Amen. And we'll see you tomorrow, Lord's willing, 6 o'clock on God's true word. And Sandy and Richard will be here as far as I know, unless something comes up. All right, well, that's all for this one. Hope uh, y'all tune in tomorrow for God's true word. We love y'all. God bless y'all, and we'll see y'all on the next one. That's right, amen. Love y'all.